مرحبا and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill where real people connect Hello and welcome back to the Matrix Green Pill podcast I'm Namita Thakkar and today I'm eager to welcome our podcast guest of the week Ajinkya Tanpuri Ajinkya is the founder and CEO of Crossval a platform that automates the process of financial modeling for early stage companies enterprises and investment funds But before I confuse myself or you with any technical terms let's hear from Ajinkya himself Ajinkya welcome and thank you so much for joining us today Hey hi thanks Namita pleasure being here Awesome. So let's begin with a brief introduction, Ajinkya. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. So I've grown up in Dubai. My family came here when I was nine years old. Since then, I've been obsessed with you know building things, fixing things, or actually breaking them first and then fixing them. So naturally, I went on to become an engineer in university. But then I realized that's more of a hobby. So I decided to explore finance and private equity, and that's where I found my passion. When I realized. you know what maybe building a business is what i'd like to do so around um, when i was around i think 24 i decided to start crossfile yeah like you said we automate financial modeling for companies funds and more that's been a very quick overview of the journey can you explain in layman's terms what does your company do someone typically starts a business one of the first things they want to do is set up a plan for this business now one of the parts of the plan is your financials so things like how much is this business going to cost me how many people do i need to hire what is the future revenue potential of this business so on and so forth and this process is traditionally done with excel spreadsheets with external consultants so on and so forth what's happened over the years is the process has gotten very complicated to a point where it's difficult for an individual business owner or a founder to do it themselves and we're almost resetting that clock with crossval where we've set up our platform and onboarding process in such a way that any business owner can set themselves up with a financial model and as opposed to taking you know 2 to 3 weeks as it takes in a traditional way it takes less than 5 minutes with crossfall that's what we focus on we want to take down you know those barriers to entry to having access to financials or your projections or your budgets or any of these business related aspects You graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering, like you said, and then you went on to start your own company. So quite unconventional transition. What was the motivational factor? And this is a huge risk to just start your own business. So what really motivated you to start your own business in the financial services sector? Yeah, I think I was always excited about building things and um engineering was really fun and exciting. I enjoyed my time in it, but I realized I didn't want to be building cars or planes or rockets and I wanted to be in the tech space and I realized that from the jobs I did and the time I spent in private equity and um there was no inspiration as such. I think I was just attracted to numbers, I was attracted to Excel. spend a good amount of time in the industry and then realized hey I could build something out of the experience I've gained here so no specific single point of inspiration but it was just something that I had built up over like two and a half years where I'd have ideas and I'd think about them and I'd consider building them but being on the financial side of the world you also are exposed to a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners and you start thinking like them you start operating like them i think that mix of technology and a bit of business knowledge is what really pushed me over the edge i'm sure when you started off there must have been some challenges you faced could you just tell us a bit about that and what were your key takeaways from the challenges or the lessons you learned yeah certainly i think one of the biggest um, challenges founders will face is just being able to balance just the stress of you know building something believing in yourself having a normal life outside of that and all of the stuff that comes with it around that time i was very close to burnout cuz work was all i would do and then trying to figure out that balance of hey this can't be although this should be something i'm doing all the time by this i mean crossfall it can't be the only thing i've done all day cuz i need to have other things in life which will give me a win the business is not always going to give you a win in life right you might have days where someone said no you might have days where something didn't work and on that day you need a win from somewhere else in your life either through family either through your friends either through another hobby that you pursue and one of the big things i realized then was it is your responsibility as a founder or a business owner to manage your emotions and manage your fulfillment and as a result you need to derive it from multiple places is you can't just focus fully on the business at all times cuz it will go through its ups and downs and because you're so strongly connected to it you will go through its ups and downs but to keep stay motivated to keep pulling yourself back in the game you need other things other areas of life where you can win as well so usually a sport does really well but yeah it can be anything i mean families or friends or 
good relationships, so on and so forth. What is the one thing you wish you knew before you started out or when you were starting out? I think, yeah, just number one, I talk about this all the time with other founder friends and we all seem to be in agreement. I knew how long it takes. Like, there's a slow process, even in today's world where things are quick. And I think it is quicker compared to, you know, if my dad tried to build a business, right? Regardless, it's still a process of learning and exploring and making mistakes. And you just have to be patient, especially if you're doing it for the first time. I have a community of first-time entrepreneurs around me and this is one of the most common topics we discuss where I'm like, I wish I knew how long this is going to take and how much patience I'm going to need. I mean, it doesn't really take that long. It's like a year and a half or a year roughly. But still, like in today's world of instant gratification, working at something for a year before it really starts working for you is significant. And um, the thing is, you realize this as you go. But if you know this in advance, it would make life simpler. And besides this, what other tips or advice you would like to give other aspiring entrepreneurs in terms of setting up their own business in the UAE? I think if it's something that's calling out to you, you should definitely do it. Maybe no one's a great, no one's born an entrepreneur. You learn these skills and you learn these abilities as you go. So if you're having ideas, if you're constantly thinking about it, if you can't stop thinking about it, you should at least give it a shot once in your life. As they say, you know, you need to itch the itch. And then if it goes away, you've done what you needed to do. But if it doesn't, then it's what's meant for you. Yeah, I speak to a lot of people who have ideas and they're exploring and they're thinking. And at some point, you have to sit down and execute. So yeah, that's my number one tip. Usually go out and do it. If you're relatively taken care of, if you have money that will last you about a year or a year and a half, you can risk it. And you're relatively young, you should go out and take the risk. Ajit, you mentioned about uh, this committee, Entrepreneurs Committee that you're a part of. Is this like an informal group that you guys meet together? Or is there something like on a monthly basis or periodically you guys meet to discuss challenges and ideas. What is this committee all about? It's not a committee. It's a group of friends. We meet once a month roughly. We don't meet in the summer, but in the winters we do. It's just a bunch of friends. It's not founders exclusively. It's VCs, investors, anyone in the ecosystem, tech employees, so on and so forth. It's called Taco Stars. Anyone can go look it up. Uh, it's called uh, the website's tacostars.org and you can sign up, join the community as well. Yeah, I was referring to a subset of that community where, you know, through that community, I've found a bunch of friends that are also first-time founders. And uh, yeah, so it's not a formal, you know, it's not a formal thing, but just a group of friends. What is that one life lesson you have learned that you keep referring to even today? The specific life lesson is a tough question, but one of the big things I've learned, both from business and sport, is just the ability to be resilient. There's, I think, Especially with being in Dubai, you need to be resilient because there's very rare moments where we hear a rejection or a no in life in this country. And when you go into business, it's the complete opposite because it's just for the first six months, all you're going to hear is no, it's not going to work. I don't want this. No one wants this, so on and so forth. So I think the ability to be resilient is the one big thing that's going to help you. Coming back to Crosswell, how can businesses approach you? What is the process? Yeah, they can just go to our website, uh, sign up or try out our demo. Or they can just send an email to hello at crossfire.com and we'll take care of that from them. It's simple. So with that, we have come to a different segment of our show called the Rapid Fire segment. It's our version of the game show. It's just very quick four questions and you need to just answer what comes to your mind first. Are you ready for that? Sure. Okay. If there was anything else you could do in terms of your career, what would it be? Oh, I'd be a professional athlete. Awesome. Okay. Who's your biggest inspiration? I don't really have a specific one. So I'll say probably my granddad. Okay. And why? I mean, he comes from almost nothing and he's built himself up where he's one of the leading scientists in India. So that's always inspired me as a child. Awesome. Okay. What is that one personality trait that would make a person stand out to you? I think the ability to build strong relationships, it doesn't have to be someone who's very extroverted and uh, outgoing. Just there are people who can build solid functional relationships without, you know, they can really connect with you as human beings. And uh, I pay attention to that. Favorite quote or motto in life? I read one recently that says confidence is not daily affirmations. Confidence is just having a stack of proof that you've done what you say you will do. And that's where confidence comes by just repeatedly doing the things you said you will do. That's the one that's at the top of my head right now. Cool. Now, before we wrap up, we would like to ask you about your green pill moment. What was your green pill moment, the action or the event that was the turning point for you or your career? Yeah. So during lockdown, I had Crosswell was just an idea. I had a full time job and I was building this on the side. Just having that realization that, hey, I could build this out to be something massive. There are forms of 
existence in the world outside of employment or a job I was a big green pill moment you could say for me where I realized hey you know entrepreneurship is this whole thing where you can go off on your own figure things out and really innovate and live the life you want to I think lockdown was my green pill moment where I realized you know what I don't have to work I can do other things in life and find fulfillment there Thank you so much Ajinkya for sharing your fantastic and compelling story with us today. I am very sure that our audience will thoroughly enjoy this conversation as much as I did. A lot of young entrepreneurs I'm sure are going to be inspired by your story and take your advice and tips. So thank you for that. But before we say goodbye, could you tell our listeners where they can find and follow you? Just on LinkedIn. My name is Ajinkya, A J I N K Y A. Just click on the most complicated name you can find and that's usually me. Okay, we're going to actually put up the links on our show notes as well. So thank you again for joining us and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks, Namita. It was a pleasure being here. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.